This is the new Sony A6700. Yes, you heard me right. Sony has not forgotten about the A6000 line of cameras. It's been almost five years since the A6600 came out, so you can expect some great improvements in this compact next generation APS-C camera. Let's check it out. The Sony A6700 features a 26 megapixel CMOS XMOR R sensor with the latest Bionz XR image processing engine. This combination delivers breathtaking details in both pictures and videos. The updated sensor allows you to shoot from an ISO of 100 up to 3200 with minimal noise. Paired with a high performance 5 axis in body optical image stabilization, you can be sure that your subject will stay sharp in focus even when your hands are tired. These features alone are excellent upgrades over the A6600 but it doesn't stop there. In addition to RAW and JPEG formats, the A6700 for the first time in an APS-C camera includes the high efficiency image file format. This significantly reduces the file size compared to JPEGs whilst maintaining image quality. Another welcome feature is creative look. This allows you to focus less on tweaking the colors and focus more on composing your shot. I personally use the neutral creative look for a shot that requires minimal post-processing. Now let's get into something new with the A6700. You probably know it by now, but so Sony has included an AI processing unit for precise subject recognition which includes humans, animals, insects and even vehicles. Besides that, Sony has also upgraded the autofocus algorithm with up to 759 face detection points in a high density array that covers approximately 93% of the image area when shooting stills. This results in more reliable real-time tracking even in low light. Some other AI enhancements worth noting are such as anti-flicker shooting. If flicker is detected when shooting stills, the camera will automatically adjust the shutter time to reduce the effect on the images. There's also a new high-speed burst shooting mode that allows you to take up to 59 compressed RAW images, up to 23 lossless compressed RAW images, and more than 1000 JPEG images. You also have the same 11 frames per second continuous shooting with autofocus and auto exposure tracking as seen on the A6600. Now to my favorite part, the video capabilities. This camera can do 4K 120. Well, technically it's 4K 100 in my region, but still, can you believe it? Sure, there are some caveats such as a massive 38% crop, but still, 4K 120. If you plan and compose your shot well, the crop factor won't matter at all. So, how does the 4K video look? Honestly, it's beautiful and sharp because the image comes from an oversampled 6K sensor. You'll also find features inherited from the new ZVE1 such as auto framing and from the FX30 cinema lines such as s Cinetone, log recording with and without LUTs, 10-bit 422HLG, focus map, breathing compensation, and active mode image stabilization. Let's go test that last one out. There is a slight crop when using active stabilization, but it's a trade-off I'm willing to make for smoother footage. I'm currently hand-holding this camera and walking relatively slowly, and I think the stabilization is doing pretty well. Of course, you can get smoother footage if you record at a higher frame rate, and then slow it down later when you're editing. Also, despite having a flip-out screen, I've kept it closed for the most compact setup. With the AI processing unit, I'm very confident that I'll stay in focus. Great for solo shooters. I'm sure some of you will ask, does it overheat? As you can see, it's directly under the sun right now. It's a very hot day. The camera is doing 4K 100, and let's see how long it's been going on for. Can we see? 11 minutes. That's an insanely long time and it has not powered off yet. Guys, 4K 100 or 4K 120, you're not going to be recording for more than 10 minutes. And how does the camera feel? It's definitely hot, but not scorching hot. It's uncomfortable, but you see, I can still hold things. So yeah, it's holding up pretty well. I have the temperature settings set to high and I'm really impressed at how the camera is holding up. I think the battery or the memory card will run out first before this camera overheats, if it even overheats. Woo, that felt like a never-ending list of features, but the upgrades are not all on the inside. There's a lot to like on the outside as well, starting with this larger and more ergonomic grip. It honestly feels so good in my hand and dare I say, makes it feel more professional to hold. Now let's check out the I.O. around this camera. Starting with the top, we have the power switch which is also the shutter button. We have a record button, a C2 button, C1 is actually here on the right. We have two assignable dials. We have your typical mode dial. 
And what's cool is that they've also included a dedicated photo, video and SNQ dial which makes switching between modes while maintaining the settings such a breeze. We have a menu button, a multi-interface shoe and the viewfinder. That's basically what you can see from the top. Now let's check out the bottom. Here we have the battery holder which houses the bigger NPF Z100 batteries which for me lasts quite some time and there's also a quarter inch mount. Now let's check out the left side. Here we have three covers. At the top is the audio in and USB-C and then we have the single card slot, a single SD card slot and lastly at the bottom is your micro HDMI and audio out for monitoring. Uh, there's nothing on the right side, like I said, there's only a C1 button. So let's head to the back of the camera. I won't take too long on the dials at the back here because it's pretty much the same for any Sony camera. What's cool about the A6700 is that it's using the new menu system which is much more organized and easier to go through. And the screen is also a touch screen. So the new menu system includes this swipe in feature where you have fast action such as a recording button or shutter button just something to make the capturing experience much easier and the screen is of course fully articulating and on top of that this whole design is also dust and moisture resistant so i think overall the a6700 is really good. The set that Sony loaned to me is the body with the power zoom 16 to 50 millimeter f3.5 to 5.6 OSS lens. Now this is the standard kit lens for a handful of Sony cameras. You either like it or you don't. I for one have recently really started liking this compact versatile lens. So much so that every shot you see taken on the A6700 in this video was shot on this lens despite me having many other crop sensor lenses. By the way, you can get the A6700 with the body only or in a kit with this lens or the 18 to 135 f3.5 to 5.6 OSS lens. Due to a very short timeline and my availability, there are unfortunately a handful of other features and tests that I did not get to do with the A6700. But I think that I've managed to test most of the features that are important to me as a non-professional solo content creator. It's so feature packed yet compact that I just put it on a strap and take it with me wherever I go. I can see this camera also being attractive for first time APS-C users and even those looking to upgrade from cameras such as the A6400. So that's it for this video. Thank you to Sony Malaysia for loaning this camera for a week. It was extremely fun running around with this tiny yet feature packed camera. I took it with me everywhere I go and for the first time ever, I took more photos than I did videos. If you're starting out as a content creator or looking to upgrade to a better camera without paying the full frame premium, I highly suggest considering the new Sony A6700. This is the camera to inspire the next generation of creativity on the go and I wish I had this option back then. Apologies if there's anything lacking in my video, it's my first time reviewing a camera. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys for the next one. Bye!